roll pulling in the same direction. It is a, it's a sacrifice, I know, because we can do exactly the same thing in some set. Uh, but when you start to produce something that looks as though you're a single team, with a single aim uh, and a single mechanism, I think it makes a, a, big, a big difference. For many people, their uh, introduction to conservative politics has been since the 1990s, when conservative brand was not something you necessarily wanted to be associated with. And the tables are now entirely turned turn because it's Labour councillors who say, well, I'm standing as a Labour candidate, but actually I'm not on that list and I'm really, really doing it only for the people, not for the party. Um, which is exactly what I had as a whip during John Major's government, when almost every conservative MP was doing their best to distance themselves from the brand. Now we've got a chance to win when the brand is strong. And therefore, the more that we associate ourselves with what is a strong, unified, forward-looking, optimistic message for the future, the better. So congratulations on that. Frankly, you know, if you can't win this election against the Labour Party, which is absolutely on its knees on its good days, then you're never going to win anything. Yeah. This is a, a government that is probably more discredited even than the last Labour government in the late 1970s when it was falling apart. And uh, you had to be in the House of Commons yesterday to see the shock on the faces of the government side um, when a hundred of their MPs were disregarding uh, their own women. Uh, that can only mean that we now have a attractive debt of the government uh, that can only be to the conservatives' advantage but to the country's disadvantage. And the New Labour myth is, of course, based on a big lie, which is that Gordon Brown was a good chancellor of the Exchequer. This is what they had based themselves on for 12 years. And even before we got to the global recession, it's worth reminding every voter that we made that before the global uh, credit crunch came, we already had the highest tax for 25 years in Britain. We already had the worst savings ratio since the 1940s. He sold our gold at exactly the wrong point of our cycle, costing us billions of pounds. And before unemployment started to go up, we had a 950,000 headline drop in unemployment and a 928,000 increase in the public sector, largely inside government. And that's reflected here in Staffordshire, where 46% more people worked for the council than in 2000. And it's this that we've got to strip out. It's this excess cost. And as I'm saying downstairs to some of your colleagues, we should be asking every single person who works in this council, what would people notice if you weren't employed here? And if they can't answer that question, they should be employed here. And that's the rigor that we will have to bring to government at every single level. And we have to start asking whether what government is doing at every level needs to be done by government at all. And if it doesn't need to be done by government, leave it alone. We should be doing only the things that we need to do and whatever tier of government we happen to operate in. However, I have a word of warning, which is that because we've got a very big opinion poll, because Labour are very unpopular, there will be a danger amongst our workers to be complacent, and there will be a danger amongst our voters to be complacent and assume that we're going to win simply because uh, Labour are very unpopular. And we can't allow that to happen, which is why we will require a huge amount of hard work we require canvassing, we require a lot of leafleting, we require a lot of building up. Because we've got to get our votes out because there is nothing that Labour would get greater comfort from than if we didn't perform as well as the opinion polls suggest. Then they would say, you see, it's not really as bad for Labour. And then you know what sort of bandwagon you can generate from that sort of activity. And I'm sure the BBC would be only too happy to have that message day after polling. Tories aren't really doing as well as the polls say, so we have to make sure that we do do that well. I've been looking through your manifesto, which I think is actually a very good document. And it's good because it's simple and it's clear. Two years ago, in Old Somerset, we won back our council with only three promises. In fact, we said we will not promise you anything but these three things. That we will keep the council tax rises down, that we will repair the physical state of the roads uh, in Old Somerset, and we will collect for rubbish once a week. There are very strong similarities in these to what we are proposing here, that you will just cut out the waste, that you'll have a review of what is happening in terms of spending, you'll keep the council tax rises down, you'll fix the things that people want fixing, and you'll not meddle with things that you need to be involved in in the first place. I think that is exactly the sort of message that we 
have to say to not just to win the election, but because what happens after the election will be very difficult. And you can work hard during this campaign. You're allowed one night of celebration when you win. Um, but believe me, after that, it's going to be anything but easy. Because you're going to be in control of a large chunk of local government at a time when it will be necessary for an incoming Conservative government to severely restrict the flow of money. It would turn our country's economy back around and to allow the private sector and the wealth creators to come back into our economy and generate the income that we need to reduce the country's debts. Yeah. That's not going to be easy for any of us. And let's, let's not pretend. Anyone who can remember the early 1980s can remember how popular you're going to be uh, when you start to have to introduce that sort of policy. But we can have one thing behind us, one thing that we can drive ourselves with, and that's to know that we're doing the right thing. That we're not doing the popular thing. And if you want to be popular, go into light entertainment. You know, if you want to be respected, go into politics. And but you only be respected if you do the right things. And you do the right things by understanding that country comes first, your constituents come second, and your party comes third. Because we have to do what is right for the country and right for the people who elect us. And if we do that as a party throughout the country at every level, then we will get our electoral reward. We may not be loved by the electorate for it, but we will be respected for the electorate, by the electorate for what we're doing. And it's respect that's missing in politics nowadays. And when we restore the faith that we will do what we say we will do, and we will not feather our own nests, then we start to return some faith in the political institutions which have been so damaged by a Labour government and my view Tony Blair that was corrupting un-British Prime Minister and the been our misfortune to have, followed by one of the most useless and incompetent ones that's been our misfortune to have. But we will have to restore faith in the body politic. Yeah. And that will be done by honesty, hard work, it will be done by sacrifice, but it will be done by doing what we promise. And we will therefore, although we have difficult times ahead, have an enormous, in fact, in my view, a historic opportunity to restore faith in politics in this country. And what could be a greater honour, what could be a greater challenge than that at the present time? Good luck. We look forward to a wonderful result. And then I'm afraid we're all going to have to tackle some very difficult problems, but hopefully tackling them in the same direction as a united national conservative team. Thank you.